Hey guys, it's Austin Davis. I'm here with my chaplain, Jeff. What's going on, Jeff? How you doing? Good, good. How you doing, AD? Doing good. Hunkered down. Yeah. I get one else. What about you? Yeah, same thing, man. We're uh, I'm still here in Philly, and so they uh, they just mandated that we have to wear masks like wherever we go. So it's uh, <laughs> it's getting real. Yeah. I mean, it's been real, but no, it's good, man. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Next, uh, pretty short peak. We're kind of cruising now, and it's supposed to come down soon. So yeah, yeah, man. But you're yeah. you're out there in Arizona, right? Yeah, Arizona, it's a little bit different. It seems like here, you know, it's there's coronavirus here, but the worry is a little bit less. There's a bunch of people out and about, and we're supposed to be sheltered at home, but I think uh, we're not to the level of the East Coast yet, so hopefully we kind of start to take it a little serious and, and shut things down before they get bad. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, it's got to be hard because you, you have the beautiful weather out there right now, you know? So. Yeah, sunny and 75 every day, so people are hiking and biking. Uh. Yeah. Everyone's staying pretty distant, but I think everyone's – it's a little stir-crazy, but, you know, we're lucky to have the good weather. So I'm sure Philly, it's still pretty cold up there. It is. It is. So it's it's a little bit easier, honestly, to stay shelter in place. Like, no one really wants to go outside when it's, like, rainy and, like, you know, 45. But uh, but it's all right. We're getting through it. So, well, cool, man. I'm grateful for this conversation. Um, you know, I've been talking with a couple different guys from uh, from the Phillies organization, just giving them an opportunity to share about – uh, their faith in Jesus and how that's helping them get through these tough times. And, um, you know, I've always just appreciated you and uh, getting to know you the past couple of years. And so can you go ahead and maybe just share with like, uh, you know, I know you didn't really grow up following Jesus necessarily. So, you know, how did you become, you know, a, a believer? Yeah. So grow, growing up, I, I mean, we went to church on Sundays a lot of times, but, you know, when I got into high school, playing baseball a bunch. I didn't really, I wouldn't say I followed Jesus or had any thought of what that meant as far as what it actually looked in my life. Um, and then I went to college. And if I'm honest, I was a pretty selfish person just in general. You know, we're on the team and we're all there for each other. But at the same time, everything I thought of was how can I get better at baseball? How can I get better at this? How can I, you know, better relationships with girls or whatever it was. It was always really self-centered um and i don't know if i would have been able to articulate that at the time but it's that's you know that's what it was um and then junior year in the fall i had some really solid uh christian teammates and um my uncle's actually a chaplain in the air force and so i had a couple conversations with him which kind of just sparked my like re-interest in um following jesus because the life that i lived didn't really like bring me that much life um you know i had i had fun in college and um you know, I, I did what everyone else did, and I enjoyed my time, but it wasn't – I didn't feel this, this satisfaction, and I didn't honestly play that well in baseball either, so I wasn't really that good at baseball at the time. And I wasn't really that good in relationships, and I was like, there's got to be something more. And, um, and then I started to follow Jesus, and I started to see, man, living life for yourself just isn't going to get you where you want to go. Uh, starting to live your life for other people, uh, to help other people, love other people, and and uh, that's really where the judge is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, you know, I started following Jesus then, and then I just <clears throat> yeah, I started studying the scriptures and started to see, man, you know, when I do things for other people, we just have such a better life. And my wife and I, we try and, you know, find spots where we can, um, can do that. And, and I think that's uh, just found to be great for, for us. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how, like, when you know that, like, you're loved by God, right, and he's already given you all you need, like, you don't need to be selfish, right? You, now, now you're positioned to be able to love others when you know that, you know, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He rose again from the grave to prove that he's God. And, like, you know, he's secured our salvation. Like, that's really, that's really a changer, isn't it, from, from living for self to living to others? Yeah, and I think that part is actually pretty tough for me because just the way I'm wired, I'm, I'm – Type A, you know, obviously baseball player, you know, you got routines, you do this, you do this, and this, so that you can get this result. And so to have a God that just loves you regardless is a pretty strange concept for me. And so uh, really leaning into that is something I've been trying to do the last couple of years, but, you know, innately it's, it's not that easy for me. So, um, but yeah, you're so right. When you, when you can lean into the love that God gives you, then you can love other people, whether you feel like they deserve it or not. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, man. So, you know, as you're going through this time and obviously your 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 life, like all of us, has been put on hold and, you know, your career has been, uh, you know, kind of put put on hold a little bit here. Um, how are you? Yeah. How's your faith in Jesus, like your relationship with him? How's that helping you uh, kind of go through what's what's going on? 
Yeah. Well, it's crazy, right? You think professional sports in general, but just life and society is like, this is what it is. Nothing's changing. And then one thing happens, you just see how fragile it really is. Um, yeah. And that's just what has been on my mind. It's just so crazy. It's, it's so fragile. One, one sickness and everything gets shut down. Uh, and for me, for my career, uh, I've been lucky enough to fail enough to see how fragile it really is. And, um, you know, and for people who pitched in Philly last year, I had, a t- I had a tough year. And so I got to see, man, like the fragility of, of what I do as a profession is real. You know, I could, I'm could i one or two bad seasons away from being done playing baseball and moving on. And I'm one or two good seasons away from moving forward. And so I've always kind of lived with this uh, mindset of, wow, this could all just be taken away from me. And so I try to open, hold it with an open hand. Um, but I think that's what this pandemic has brought out. Uh, and I think what we see with God is just the opposite of fragility. You just see strength. You see consistency. You see, regardless of what happens, God is with you. Um, and there's going to be a lot of crappy times, you know, everyone's life. I think that's a, a misnomer that we get in the Christian life is like, okay, you start following God and then everything's good. You know, your, your life's going to be great. Everything's going to be sunshine and roses, you know, joy over fear, all this stuff. And it's, no, it's God's with you through the fearful times. Like this is a fearful time for everyone. Um, so God's with us in it. And he's the consistent and strong thing, even when the world around us is, is really fragile. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, man. I, I think that we, we don't often think about our fragility, do we? You know, um, we, 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 we think that, I mean, especially as guys, right? I mean, we're, we're strong. We can get through it. We'll be fine. And, and yet this is, I mean, post face to face with our own mortality. And yet that's, that's important, you know? Um, I mean, I think how often the Bible talks about, like, we're all like grass. Like, we're here one day, gone another. Like, we're like, you know, vapor in the wind, just you know, like a mist. And and Paul says, teach me, you know, teach me to number my days. Like, the idea is that we are, we are so fragile, but that's meant to lead us to, as you said, the unchanging rock, with, which is God. Like, not trusting in self, but looking to God for that, you know, security that only can come through him. Um, so, yeah, man. It's, uh, that's good. It's good. I'm grateful that that's encouraging you during this time. Um, so what's, yeah, I'm just, is your, I know your guy loves to read, read the Bible and, um, you know, we talk, read the Bible together a lot and talk about a lot. What's, what's something that's been encouraging you recently? Uh, well, to stay on the same theme of loving people, uh, and we've, we've talked about it a few times in Bible study, but, um, you know, perfect love casts out fear. And I think it's in first John four or somewhere in there. Um, just said, God's perfect love casts out fear. And I think, you know, to call it out, this is a really fearful time and we need um, God's love. We need to feel that. And then we need to give that to other people. And I think, you know, my job as a follower of Jesus is to, to do that, to one, be smart and shelter in place. And that's just an easy way that you can love people is not potentially exposing them and, and having this thing grow. But then also, you know, it's been so cool to see how many players have donated money and donated resources and, you know, got together and even doing something as silly as the MLB the show tournament thing, you know, it's, it's cool because then it gives people a, a chance to see them and get to know them and just, you know, Hey, here's a, here's a little distraction in the midst of this craziness going on. And um, I think finding cool ways to love people just helps, helps us get through this, this crazy time. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And you're right. First John, first, first John uh, four. So good, good job. Yeah. I love that. That again. Found the uh, dark on that one. <laughs> yeah, no, that was good, man. That's good. It was a good shot. It was a good shot. And uh, no, I love that. Just when we when we know the perfect love of God, right? Then then that then there's no reason to feel like the Lord is. I think about Romans Romans, um, you know, uh, eight eight eight, uh, you know, nine, uh, thirty one. Like if God's for us, who can be against us? You know, like like if God loves us and He's this all powerful, amazing God then there's no reason to fear, you know, what, what can be against us. What we're going through is scary. It doesn't change what we're going through, but it can change how we go through it because we know uh, who God is for us. Um, so, yeah, man, I, uh, I appreciate you bringing that up. I haven't, I haven't read that scripture in a bit. That's good. I'm going to go back and look at that again. So, good dude. I appreciate you getting all the way to the verse, too, to show me up a little bit. <laughs> well hey man I, mean, I got you know you, you, this little bit of competition we got here man let's let's be honest yeah. so you know the competition <laughs> doesn't start right now i got no competition going on my wife and i are playing like monopoly every <laughs> night 
I'm like getting way too competitive. I'm like, man, I need to get out and compete, man. A healthy <laughs> way. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, you could beat some beat some kids up in wiffle ball or something. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, cool. Well, thanks for jumping on this, buddy. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, look forward to hopefully seeing you in person at some point this year. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man. All right, bro. Good seeing you.